How's it going everyone? As always, my name is Jimmy Champagne and this is my channel Deck Ready that is all about the Steam Deck and other gaming handhelds. In today's video, we're talking about the huge 2024 update that the Steam Deck just got and what features I'd like to see come in later updates. Before I jump into it, I just checked the numbers like 95% of the people who are watching this channel are not subscribed. So whether you're new here or you've been here for a while, just give the subscribe button a double check. I'd love to get this channel to 100,000 subscribers. I've already got a play button for people PS ready, I'd love to have one for deck ready because I love my Steam Deck and I want that thing on the wall. Real talk though, thanks if you subscribe. Let's jump into the first news topic, which is of course this new update for the Steam Deck. So honestly, this was a pretty big update. It took a while to install on my Steam Deck and that kind of got me rubbing my hands together. I was excited to see some new features. And once I jumped in, the first thing I immediately noticed is a complete visual overhaul for the quick access menu. Now I'm sure this has been there for a minute if you've been on the beta channel of release releases, but as I've mentioned before here on the channel with my Steam Deck OLED limited edition, I just stay on the stable branch. I mean, in the last video, we talked about this black screen of death that's been plaguing not only OLED models, but also LCDs. I just, long story short, really want to keep this thing as safe, secure, and protected as possible. I leave it in the case with the little Velcro strap closed all the time. A lot of the time I zip it as well, and I just keep the stable branch on it as much as possible. So when I saw this visual overhaul, I was honestly pretty excited. They added in little icons next to a lot of the options under the performance menu. So like if you look at allow tearing, for example, I just turned this on in Crisis Core Reunion, which is awesome on the Steam Deck if you haven't played it. Uh, you'll see a little heart that's kind of like cut in half. It's torn a little bit. Like you love V-Sync or something and turning it off will break your heart in two. The reason you would want to turn something like that off though is because if you're using V-Sync in a game, the Steam Deck with allow tearing off uh, already has V-Sync enabled. So you're just doubling up on V-Sync, which would kind of reduce performance. And it's just like a double measure that you really don't need. Basically, if you look at any of the sliders, features, or toggles you can turn on or off in that quick access menu, the vast majority of them got a little bit of a visual overhaul. And I did also notice that the actual sliders themselves have been overhauled quite a bit, and they're a lot more fluid now. On my Steam Deck OLED, when I dropped the refresh rate down to 40 FPS, Hertz, whatever you want to call it, for Crisis Core Reunion, I noticed it was just so much smoother and that everything happened quite a bit quicker. So that was a really nice little surprise. They've also fixed quite a few black screen issues. I've mentioned here on the channel that I've been playing a lot of racing games and that mostly is on my desk with my racing wheel, but I've been playing Expeditions Mud Runner and Forza Horizon 4, my preferred Forza Horizon between 4 and 5, quite a bit on my Steam Deck as well lately. And one of the most annoying issues with Forza Horizon 4 and 5 is that they refuse to launch in full screen, even if you set them to full screen. So when they're in windowed mode, if it's not the right aspect ratio for the Steam Deck screen. So if you played them on another gaming PC or something like that, or you're launching it for the first time, you'll hear the audio for the game, but it'll be a black screen. This has been an issue for years now. Like I hate saying that because it makes me feel old, but like it's been an issue since the Steam Deck came out and they finally fixed it in this update. I'll always, when I see stuff on patch notes, I go and check it. I checked it with Forza Horizon 4. Lo and behold, I get the game to start up without a black screen successfully every time now. So that's incredible. Thank you Valve so much for doing that. I mentioned that I've been playing Final Fantasy VII Remake. I just beat it. Uh, if you want to hear my review, I was on the Summon Sign podcast over on Last Stand Media just this week. I talked about the game in depth, but spoilers, I absolutely loved it. One issue I had though, is if you play it on Steam Deck, which is where I played the entire game, you have to mod it to get a good experience. You have to download the DX11 mod. You have to download the no stuttering mod. You basically have to do a couple drag and drop things to get it working, which thankfully only takes a few seconds. But one error I kept running into was that when I would drag the folder to my desktop to then drag into downloads, it would create a shortcut to the folder on my desktop. So I'd have to open up another menu and then drag it into the correct folder. And it was just an extra step I didn't need to go through. You'll be happy to know, or at least I would be happy to know in the past that if I had just updated my Steam Deck and not ignored that little gear with the exclamation point over it, they finally fixed that issue. That's another one that's been plaguing it for quite a long time. One of my favorite features of the Steam Deck OLED is the new LED that they have for when you're charging it or the thing is on. When you're charging it, when it's done charging, it'll actually turn green, which is really cool. But if you're like me and you have the limited edition OLED, the thing is clear. So when I'm playing Final Fantasy in bed lately, that light is bright enough to wake my wife up sometimes. Like if she turns over and I have the screen kind of towards her, she's like, can you turn off the green light? I always said no, but now they've added a brightness slider for the LED. I'm not sure if that also affects the LCD model. I would guess it does, but either way, if it's like that 
update where you could turn off the PS5 beep, I know that's gonna go a long way for a lot of people. They finally made the fixes that they did for Persona 3 Reload uh, official for the game. So if you're on the stable branch of Proton, you should be just fine. Before you had to run it in Experimental, I think it came down to the fact that the game was enabling ray tracing no matter what, and there's no way to turn it off. So it's good to know that they fixed that. They also fixed stuttering pretty much across the board. Stuttering hasn't really been that big of a problem for me on the Steam Deck. The only time I really ran into it was last summer uh, when I came home to Michigan before I moved back here. I was playing Alan Wake, the original version, on my Steam Deck, and no matter what I did, it was getting stuttering at 40 FPS, 30 FPS, 60 FPS, and it was really bugging me. It turned out to be because of the beta update, but that was a plague. And then after that, I kind of noticed it in a few more games, so I went back to the stable version and that fixed it. I haven't really noticed a lot of stuttering since then, but apparently if you used FSR, like the built-in version, or NIS, that would cause stuttering in quite a few games. So they smoothed that out across the board, they've said, which is great. And they fixed an issue which was really bugging me, which was if you left your screen at 90 hertz, right? If you have a Steam Deck OLED, sometimes when you would put it in sleep mode and come back out of it, it would say it was running at 90 hertz, like in the quick access menu, but you could tell it was running at 60, especially if you pulled up the keyboard to search for a game in the store. Like once you're playing at 90 hertz or in interacting with the operating system at 90 hertz, you really get used to it and you can tell when it's not running that fast. It wasn't just a placebo, it turns out. It really does turn out that the thing was running at 60 FPS sometimes. So thankfully they fixed that issue as well. There's a whole section in here about HDR displays, like plugging them into the dock or plugging them directly into the USB-C port or plugging them directly into another dock or something like that, causing a black screen on either the Steam Deck or the HDR monitor. They say they fixed that, but I've talked about it a few times here on the channel. I have had nothing but issues the past six months or so with the official Steam Deck dock and I just don't want to redo my whole desktop setup over there with the JSOX one. I ended up buying the Razer uh, like desktop USB-C hub and that's been working great. I just like, I really wish they would release some firmware or for the Steam Deck or the dock that just fixed all the issues. These incremental updates that fix little problems with the dock are great. I don't want to complain about them, but that's something that should just work all the time. It should have worked perfectly at launch. It should work perfectly in perpetuity because it has problems that the JSOX versions do not. And I think that's pretty unacceptable considering it's much more expensive than all of the competition and it's officially coming from Valve. Like a lot of people I know bought that dock and the fact that it doesn't work completely right, even on the latest hardware, the Steam Deck OLED, I just don't like that. And I hope they do more fixes soon and quickly. So overall, I think that's a great update for the Steam Deck. I love the visual overhaul. I didn't really see it in the patch notes, but I know it's there because I've been playing so much on my Steam Deck the past three months. I started with Dragon's Dogma in January. I did a whole new Vegas playthrough. I just played through the entirety of Final Fantasy VII Remake. I've been playing hours and hours of Mudrunner Expeditions or Expeditions of Mudrunner game. Now I'm on Crisis Core Reunion and I definitely noticed that visual overhaul. So if you're going to go in the comments and say that's been there for a while, I promise you it's because it was on the beta branch or maybe I'm crazy. I don't know, but I just want to praise that because anything they can do to improve that nice little interface that they've created with the new Steam OS always makes me happy because I'm just like a visual guy. I love visual improvements even when you're sitting there thinking that they possibly couldn't do any and then they impress you when they do. I love moments like that. They don't happen as much anymore lately because with the Series X and the PS5, they kind of nailed it out of the gate in terms of UI, in my opinion at least. The Steam Deck as well was pretty damn good. So it's nice to see them kind of making visual tweaks across the board whenever they can. But with all that being said, there are a few features that I'd really like to see expanded or at least added to the Steam Deck as a whole. The first one is screen recording, okay? I love doing screen recording for B-roll because I use a lot of gameplay and most of the time I end up just using my PS5 captures and taking the time to use Decky Recorder, it's just a pain in the ass. Half the time it doesn't activate right. It'll say it's recording and then you stop the recording, see it stopped at some point. You go in your folders and you see that you only have a 10 second file there. I don't know why it stops recording after 10 seconds the vast majority of the time, but that's been an issue plaguing me with that software ever since the Steam Deck LCD like a year ago. And the one thing about that third party recorder is that if you use it, it doesn't tank performance at all. It makes like a negligible effect on performance in every game I've tried it with, whether you're talking a big game like Final Fantasy VII Remake or a smaller game like Crisis Core Reunion. So knowing that, I really think Valve should implement some way to record the screen. Obviously, that makes it uh, easier for someone like me, a YouTuber who needs B-roll,
roll. But one of the best features on the PlayStation 5 is the fact that you can make 30 second clips of games you're playing. And now you have to share them to the app, which takes a few seconds, of course, but before you could just share them to Twitter. I'd love to see them just copy that functionality wholesale. Like let me capture 30 second clips at least on my Steam Deck and then just share them to Twitter because now the process is super irritating. Like if you make recordings, you have to go into your folders, you have to upload them to Drive. It's kind of finicky if you tweet them directly from the desktop because it records an MKV. So what I have to do is upload them to Drive, download them on my computer, run them through Final Cut or Handbrake, and then upload them to Twitter. That's a huge tedious process that could easily be pared down if they just implemented a feature where you can natively record and then built-in features where you could connect to Twitter and upload there. And like, honestly, if the Nintendo Switch has the ability to record its screen, there's no reason the Steam Deck shouldn't, right? Like I understand that you can with Decky plugins and everything like that, but I just don't like plugins. I want everything to be provided by Valve because at that point, I know it's going to work right. And if it doesn't, I know it's going to be fixed in a future update. It seems like every time I update my Steam Deck, it breaks Decky Recorder. And I'm so frustrated at this point that I'm just gonna keep using PS5 B-roll. I'm being honest. Another expanded feature I'd like to see is being able to connect to Spotify or Apple Music. If you open up your quick access menu, there's a little music tab there now that allows you to play your bought soundtracks on Steam. So if you buy deluxe editions of games, traditionally they'll come with the soundtrack as well. You can then download them from Steam to your Steam Deck and play them while you're playing games. There should be functionality for Apple Music and Spotify. I love playing my own music when I'm playing games like Helldivers 2 or even Crisis Core. The whole game is built around these side missions that are just combat gauntlets. And while the Final Fantasy music is traditionally excellent, I've played so much Final Fantasy 7 lately that honestly, I'd love to just turn the music off and play my own music over it. Like how awesome would it be fighting Ifrit and hearing Freebird, right? Like that would be absolutely incredible. So it would be awesome if Valve implemented a feature where you could log into Spotify or Apple Music. And if they wanted to take it one step further, knowing that this is a handheld console, I think it'd be great if they allowed you to download playlists. Spotify has a dedicated app that you can activate, run in the background and play music over your games. But I think it'd be better, obviously, if it was just built into the quick access menu. The only way to use Apple Music really on the Steam Deck is to download this app called Cider, which is great. It's just a web interface that kind of has its own little app. It doesn't allow you to download playlists though. So someone like me who uses Apple Music, I can't download the vast majority of my music at all to the Steam Deck, which really sucks. So my two part wish list is that they expand that soundtrack section to allow you to log into Apple Music and Spotify, and then taking it one step further, allow you to download at least playlists that you can navigate when you're offline. The next feature I'd like to see is integration with Discord. Discord. Again, like with Spotify, I know you can just download the native Discord app on the Linux side, like on the desktop side, and then you can run it in the background on the Steam Deck. But I think it'd be great if we had parity with the Xbox Series X and PS5, where it should be added to the quick access menu. I don't think it needs to be there by default because I know a lot of people don't want that menu cluttered up, but having some sort of Discord navigation where you can join servers or join your friends' calls and then use either the inboard mic, which I'm 99% sure the Steam Deck has, or preferably a gaming headset with the Steam Deck so you can talk to your friends while you're playing. I'm sure there'd be a minor performance hit in heavy to play games like Elden Ring or Final Fantasy VII Remake. But again, for something like Crisis Core, that's a game I love playing when I'm talking to my friends on Discord and having to come downstairs, get into a Discord call on my PC and then sit at my desk and like hold my Steam Deck up. It's just an extra step like too far that's uncomfortable. So I'd love it if, you know, they added functionality for Discord officially on the Steam Deck. So yeah, that about covers my list and of course the full breakdown of the new Steam Deck update. Make sure you got your Steam Deck up to date if you haven't connected it to the internet in a while or went through the time to update it when you saw that little gear. I know it's kind of a pain in the ass because you have to allow it to apply and then restart your deck. It takes a little bit, but I promise it's worth it at the very least for that visual overhaul. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Remember to subscribe and set your notifications to all if you haven't already. As always, my name is Jimmy Champagne. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching and shape on.